Hi, I'm Elizabeth at A Literary Princess, and today I am giving you a tour of my classics bookshelf. So I just got this bookshelf. My fiance's grandfather made it for me. So I moved all of my classics onto it. And I thought I would give you a little tour of my classics library. So I will do that. I'm gonna switch the view of the camera so that you are looking at the books and not at me. All right, so here we go at the top of the bookshelf. So first up, to explain some of the knickknacks I have on here, please ignore my ugly hands. First is actually not a copy of Wuthering Heights, shockingly. This is a notebook that I bought at the Bronte Parsonage Museum. It has been with me since 2016 when I bought it while I was there during my master's program. So this lives up there. I take notes for conferences in here and stuff. All right, and then we have a bookmark. <laughs> These two um, copies, the, uh, the Woman in White and Pride and Prejudice. This was from my fiance's lake house. They were getting rid of a bunch of their books and I just grabbed these because they were pretty. I don't really have anything to use for them though, but they're very nice. Apologies for the shaky cam, by the way, but that's just how it has to be. And then this is actually a little box um, from Owl Crate. I th it's based on the... Um, Oh my god, I don't I don't know the series. I've never actually read it. Um, the one with the three different colored Londons. I don't know. Anyway, I use it to store my my extra magic cards. <laughs> All right, so we've got Watership Down. Obviously, these are in alphabetical order. Watership Down. Oh, this is actually an interesting one. This is the Lancashire Witches by Harrison Ainsworth. I wrote my master's thesis partially on this book. So it is a Victorian novel, very popular in its era, but mostly forgotten about except by the people in Lancashire. It deals with the witch trials that happened there, um, the Pendle witch trials, and it, you know, makes a romance out of them. Um, we've got Hospital Sketches by Louisa May Alcott, which I think I got because I did a paper on her in high school. We have this cute little Penguin Classics, The Beautiful Cassandra by Jane Austen that I got at the Jane Austen Museum. Then we've got my Jane Austen books themselves. I've got two copies of Sense and Sensibility, a regular copy in this beautiful Folio Society edition, which I have showed off here before. All right, and then volume the second, which has is some of her, um, early writings but I've never read it because the pages are like still stuck together it's really weird and you need a knife to cut them and I'm lazy and don't have a knife Ooh, I think I'm gonna need to figure out a better angle for this all right there's just no good angle for this anyway this is my copy of Peter Pan it was given to me by my aunt Pat who was the woman who got me into classic literature. It is the first book I ever remember getting from her, actually. And let's see if I can open it one-handed. <laughs> so I actually, on the cover page, to Elizabeth on her birthday, August 2nd, 1999, love Aunt Pat. So this would have been my fifth birthday, I think. Oh dear, can I get it back in the shelf one-handed? There we go. We've got Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, excellent book. And then we have my Bronte collection or the majority of it, Agnes Grey, Jane Eyre. <laughs> Three of my copies of Wuthering Heights. So the Norton, the French, and the Illustrated. And then we have these lovely um, editions with The Tenet of Wildville Hall, The Professors, along with Poems and Miscellanea, Shirley and Villette. I bought these at like a garage sale and they didn't, obviously they didn't have Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights and apparently Agnes Grey because they used to be library books. So the library just kept those, I guess, but very pretty, published in 1949, the Heather edition, arranged and introduced by Phyllis Bentley. 
I don't know. I'm really fond of them. These are the editions that I first read all four of those books in, actually. And we've got some little Christmas ornaments. Rescue Kitty, Who Rescued Whom. My mom got me, us that for Christmas this year. And then this is from my roommates at my old house, actually. I don't know if it's a raccoon or what it's supposed to be, but it's freaking adorable. Um, we've got another Victorian novel, Rhoda Broughton, Cometh Up as a Flower. That's for my exams. And we have my two, two of my favorite children's classics. Um, we've got A Little Princess, which is my all-time favorite by Francis, Francis, Hodgson's, uh, Francis Hodgson Burnett. And The Secret Garden. I adore this cover. So usually those would be on my children's lit shelf. But most of my children's literature is at my parents' house still. Because there's just not room for it here. So I brought these with me and Peter Pan. And the rest are still lit at their house. Then we've got Francis Burney, Cecilia, and Evelina. And then we've got Mary Corelli's Thelma there on the end. All right, and now at a slightly better angle to film on the next shelf down. First of all, we have Don't Worry Sweetie, You'll Find Your Heathcliff, embroidered for me by one of my former roommates and based off something my grandmother actually said to me. I've I've explained this in another video as well, but I, I love this. This is like one of my most prized possessions. All right. So these two large things over here are my Dynamolic Crake books, Bread Upon the Waters and Olive. They're stupidly large and I kind of hate them, but it's fine. Then we've got The Complete Claudine by Colette, which I have not read. I bought it when um, Kira Knightley was coming out in that movie about Colette. And I was like, oh, I want to read this. And then I never did. So, yeah. Um, the Daughters of Danius. I don't know how that's pronounced. That is another Victorian novel. We've got Wilkie Collins' The Moonstone. We've got my copy of Dante's Inferno. I only have Inferno. I read it for um, a book club. Uh, you'll notice this is the only Penguin Classic not down on the Penguin Classic shelf. And that is because it's one of the older editions. And it's also shorter than all of the others. So I needed more room for, I think it was Alice in Wonderland. So I kicked it off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, here's my copy of Bleak House, which is actually getting switched out for a new one because this one is kind of rough looking. And the rest of my Dickens, we've got David Copperfield, Great Expectations. Um, this lovely little edition of The Mystery of Edwin Drood that I got at like a flea market type thing. Let's see if I can get it open to the publication page one handed. Ooh. Not the most lovely uh, execution there, but yeah, so as you see, this is an 1871 uh, Cambridge Riverside Press edition. Quite lovely, very fond of it. Haven't read it yet. <laughs> and then we have Hard Times, Oliver Twist, and A Tale of Two Cities, all of which I have read. Actually, Edwin Drood's the only Dickens book on here that I haven't read. Interesting. All right, we've got my Sherlock Holmes things, um, Hound of the Baskervilles, Selected Stories, and A Study in Scarlet. I do have a sign of four, but it's down on the Penguin Classic shelf. You'll see that in a moment. Jill by Amy Dillwyn. Um, this is Sister Carrie by Theodore Drazer. Somebody tell me how to pronounce that because I don't actually know. Pretty sure he's American, but um, this was another one that my in-laws were just like, we don't need these books anymore. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> this is my fiance's. I don't know what really he is, but he's kind of adorable. So he lives here. Gonna move you, sir. Thank you. We've got my Daphne du Maurier books. Um, my cousin Rachel. We've got my copy of Rebecca, which I hate. It looks like a cheap romance novel. <laughs> I hate it so much. Um, we've got my George Eliot, or some of them. Middlemarch again is down on 
Penguin Classics. We've got Adam B, The Mill on the Floss, and Silas Marner. We have Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth. We have Euripides, Medea, which I've had since high school. All of these um, Dover Thrift editions, you'll see a few of them. They are all from high school. That's what our high school got us. Oh, Ruth Hall by Fanny Fern. This was for my um, American 19th century class. This was excellent. I'd never heard of Fanny Fern. She was a writer, obviously, during the 19th century in America. But this um, is a somewhat autobiographical novel. All right, we've got Madame Bovary. I hate this edition. It's so ugly. <laughs> but it is a Norton edition. And I, I brought it with me to the UK because we had to read that for one of my classes. Uh, the Fourth Saga, which I've not read yet. My Aunt Pat gave that to me. Still need to read it. And then we've got the first of my Gaskell books. This is Ruth. And then we are going to jump down to the Penguin Classics. All right. So for the Penguin Classics, I wanted them to be in the background for my videos usually. So that is why they are kind of in the middle here. So again, they start in alphabetical order. We start with the Brontes. We've got Ten of Wildfell Hall, Shirley, and Villette. And then finally, my what I call my pretty copy of Wuthering Heights is home, except I'm looking at it and she looking rough. I don't know what asshole put a coffee mug and got a stain on this book, but it wasn't me because I don't do that. So somebody's going to be answering to me. We've got Alice in Wonderland, The Woman in White, Crime and Punishment. Here is the sign of four looking very rough. I would just like to say the only one of these that looks rough because of me is Wuthering Heights. All of the rest of these that are like, wow, that one's looking yeek. Those were all bought used, so they came to me like that. So yeah, <laughs> it's not my fault. Well, I will say this, um, this that we're about to see on Mary Barton, that is my fault. I was trying to get a sticker off because stickers are the devil. We've got George Eliot's Middlemarch, and you'll notice it is a newer Penguin classic than these. So I was trying to do all of my black spine with the white band ones in a row and keep the older ones, um, the older ones are like down at the end because they're not as as pretty <laughs> and as aesthetic but then i realized that my copy of middlemarch and my copy of dracula are newer and they have a slightly different band and it really pissed me off but say lovey um we've also got romola down here mary barton and north and south by elizabeth gaskell hangs a man by shirley jackson the book of marjorie kemp which I have never read and is looking really good. Why does that look so like crisp compared to everything else? Jeez. Um, so this book I heard about in college because my um, favorite professor, who was kind of my mentor and the reason I went to grad school, did medieval and Renaissance literature. So Marjorie Kemp was a religious writer in the medieval period. So I was like, oh yeah, medieval women, I'm totally gonna read that, and then I never read it. I'm sorry you have to deal with me and like shaky camera and not being able to get anything <laughs> done and on the bookshelf. Um, we've got The Complete Plays by Christopher Marlowe. We've got John Stuart Mill's On Liberty and the Subjection of Women, which I've not read yet, that's for my exams. We've got R.K. Narion. I don't actually know how that's pronounced. So this is two novels in one. This is A Tiger for Malgudi and The Maneater of Malgudi. I read The Maneater of Malgudi for my post-colonial literature class. We've got Jekyll and Hyde. Here's my copy of Dracula, not matching anything else. Although I will say I really like the texture of this one. So because of that, it's allowed. 
We've got Vindication of the Rights of Women by Mary Wollstonecraft, which is also for my exams. Uh, Williams Wordsworth's The Prelude. I've only read part of that. And then we've got um, a collection of the Pre-Raphaelites poetry from Rossetti to Ruskin. And then we move into the, <laughs> the ones on the end here, which are the older editions and will probably be slowly kicked off as I get new ones. So here is um, Jane Austen's Lady Susan, the Watsons and Sanditon. We've got Elizabeth Barrett Browning's poetry. Here is my copy of The Professor from Penguin Classics, not matching any of the others. Um, Daniel Deronda. Wow, I've got a lot more Elliot than I thought. I like Elliot. <laughs> um, the Blythedale Romance by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Henry James's The Aspen Papers and the Turn of the Screw being much shorter than everyone else. So that's going to be the next one to be kicked off when I get another one with the white band. Uh, Miss March Banks by Margaret Oliphant. And then The Morgansons by Elizabeth Stoddard, which I haven't read yet. I'm pretty sure this is American. Is this American? Yes, American middle class. Um, but it sounded interesting, so I grabbed it at a used bookstore. So that is the Penguin Classics shelf, and now we are going down right, more. Picking back up with Elizabeth Gaskell, we've got The Last of Hers, Wives and Daughters, both the last one that I own and the last one that she ever wrote. I hate this cover so much. The, the quote from The Guardian, Wives and Daughters has plot, intrigue, and romance. It has plot... What, do other books not have plot? That's really all you could think of to say about this. It has plot. So angry. I dared um, one of my MFA friends to say that as criticism in a workshop, but she wouldn't pick me up on it. I think it would have been funny. We've got The Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I haven't read that since high school. Um, the Heavenly Twins by Sarah Grand, a late Victorian novel. Then we've got my Thomas Hardy. We've got Far From the Madding Crowd, which I actually have not read yet. And then Jude the Obscure and Tess of the Durbervilles, which I have read. These were both given to me by my aunt, the same aunt who gave me so many of these other ones and got me into literature. I've got more Hawthorne. That's The Scarlet Letter and The House of Seven Gables, which I have not read. The Scarlet Letter I have, though. Um, James Hogg, The Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner. We've got more Shirley Jackson. I really love Shirley Jackson. So we've got The Haunting of Hill House. And then my personal favorite, We Have Always Lived in the Castle. I adore this cover so much. Continuing on with the struggle. We've got pull these forward a bit. We've got Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. We have A Separate Piece by John Knowles. That's another one that I read for high school um, in, geez, summer reading in high school. So I actually would have read that when I was 13. I'm just getting out of eighth grade. Well, I haven't read it since. I really should. I remember kind of hating it, but I think I would really appreciate it now. We've got To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. That's another one that was given to me by my aunt. The Romance of a Shot by Amy Levy, another great Victorian book. Button Brooks by Thomas Mann. This is German, and this was great. I read this for um, a book club, and it was awesome. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. My aunt once again gave me this beautiful copy. All right, and now, unfortunately, my head is, like, against the table, so <laughs> this will be interesting. If you hear, like, a bang, that's me hitting my head. We've got Paradise Lost by John Milton. We have the two Toni Morrison books that I have, A Mercy and Song of Solomon. Ironically, neither of which I have read. The one I have read by her I do not have. It was jazz. We've got another Margaret Oliphant with a stupid sticker that is Hester. Somebody drew on it with blue highlighter because they are evil. 
Um, Moths by Weta. Adore this. Another excellent underrated Victorian author. Um, can barely see this. Up oh, Edgar Allan Poe stories. Um, another Dover Thrift edition, meaning that it's been with me since high school. Uh, the Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. A Struggle for Fame with its beautiful pink spine by Charlotte Rydell. I'm actually reading that right now. The original Bambi, which I showed off in a recent book haul. Hope Leslie, or Early Times in the Massachusetts. This was for that same American class that I read Fanny Fern for. And then The Hearth and the Eagle by Anya Seton. This was another one given to me by my aunt. So this is set in Marblehead, which is where my aunt's family was from. So that is why this was like a, bit, a book that's a big deal in my family because of that. And I haven't read it. <laughs> and then this is The Three Sisters by Mae Sinclair. I think she's a 20th century writer, but she kind of based the stories on the Brontes. I got drawn to it because of the portrait of the Brontes on the cover. All right, and then we'll be moving down to our final right, show. It's a little bit harder to see down here, but we've got Mary Shelley's Matilda... We have two plays by Sophocles, um, Antigone and Oedipus Rex, both in the Th Dover Thrift edition, meaning they're from high school. Ironically, it's a trilogy and we didn't read the second one. I don't know. Seems weird, but okay. We have an edition of Heidi that's the same edition as that lovely... Um, Secret Garden I've got, Uncle Tom's Cabin, which I read in high school and um, in my American Lit class recently, Vanity Fair, just read that, that was excellent. Now we've got my Tolstoy, so first up is this movie tie-in copy of Anna Karenina, which I think actually belongs to my mother, and I should probably give that back to her and get a copy that is not the movie tie-in copy, but at least it has Kira Knightley on it. So I'm in love with Kira Knightley, by the way. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but she's my favorite actress and I adore her and she's beautiful. Struggling. Uh, the Death of Ivan Ilyich and Other Stories, War and Peace. That lovely orange thing is Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope. This lovely no-spine no book is The Widow Barnaby by Frances Milton Trollope, who was Anthony Trollope's mother. This is the book that has no page numbers. So if you ever refer, hear me referring to something like, it has page numbers, it's because that book doesn't have page numbers, and I was absolutely furious. Oh, we've got Marcello by Mrs. Humphrey Ward. That's also for my exams, Victorian lit. And then we have my Edith Wharton collection. We've got The Age of Innocence, which I've read and I love. The Custom of the Country, which I have not read. Ethan Frome, which I have not read. The House of Mirth, which I hate. <laughs> and then Summer, which I've read and it was fine, but I was 16, so my opinion might have changed. I hated The Age of Innocence at 16, too. No, I think it's beautiful. I've got The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. We have East Lynn by Ellen Wood. This is another Victorian novel. And then we've got Orlando. I think I mentioned this kind of recently. I bought this while I was drunk. <laughs> um... There's a bookstore that I really like called The Book and Bar. They sell used books and they are also a bar. And the MFA program here used to do um, monthly readings there. So I went because one of my friends was reading and I got drunk and I came home with Orlando and I woke up the next morning and I was like, why would I buy Orlando of all books? I don't even like Virginia Woolf. And then we've got A Room of One's own by Virginia Woolf. And then the last book that's actually a classic is The Clever Woman of the Family by Charlotte Mary Young, I think is her name. Did I get that right? I did. So that ends the classics. I am going to go over these um, few 
nonfiction over here though since they're here. So we've got a lot of stuff from my feminist theory class. Uh, Willful Subjects by Sarah Ahmed. The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. Gender Trouble by Judith Butler. And then From Girl to Goddess um, by, I don't remember, Valerie Frankel. So this is the heroine's journey through myth and legend. I got that mainly because I'm interested in um, mythic and fairy tale motifs in women's literature. And I thought that might be useful. Same for the heroine's journey by Murdoch, Maureen Murdoch. Um, we've got Blood, Bread, and Poetry by Adrian Rich. This is a series of essays. The Feminine Mystique by D Betty Friedan. I don't really know how that's pronounced. And then Gothic and Illustrated History, which I just got in that same book haul as Bambi. So I showed it off a little bit there. You should definitely go watch that because it's freaking beautiful. So that is my classics bookshelf. I think that as I get the new bookshelves and arrange them, I will probably give tours of those as well. I'm not going to do tours of my current shelves because A, they're ugly, <laughs> like really ugly, and B, they're very much out of order because when I got rid of the bookshelf that used to be here, there were books on there that hadn't been organized into genre, which is how I arrange, and so they're still not arranged by genre they're just kind of shoved onto one of the other bookshelves where I had had classics so as I get my new bookshelves and have everything be pretty I will show you more of my library it's been great chatting with you all I will see you soon bye